subdivision number four on Portland Avenue. Uh, it's basically, a, there's, a, there's an existing house, an existing shop that was uh, a plumbing shop that what the desire is to split the two so that the house can be sold separately from the shop. Um, uh, the, the house lot would be 2.28 acres. Uh, the lot with the shop on it would be 3.23 acres. There's an existing septic system on each of these lots right now, one for the shop and one for the house. There is a common well that's located in this location right here. Uh, however, for state subdivision approval, we have shown potential wells on both lots as well as a 4K area because we're required to have state subdivision approval. So that's in your second sheet, that, uh, the total sheet that's on there. So uh, you can see the reason that we, I'll just give an idea of the reason that we drew the lines the way we did. The requirement is uh, that there be a 25 foot setback from structures, and as it turns out, we're 50.1 feet between the two buildings, so we barely make that. So we split that 25 feet from the garage on the house lot, 25.1 feet from the shop on the uh, on the abutting lot, and then we just we uh, angled the lot so in order to make the requirements for uh, upland areas and. Uh, we have to subtract out wetlands. So we have the minimum lot size for the wetlands as well as uh, the upland area. Um, 
So I have also there were there was a little bit of confusion as to the, the trust, the actual name of the trust. It was listed a couple different ways. I think the application head headed as uh, had the word family in there, and that's not actually the case. Uh, it's actually the, uh, uh, the uh, Robert R. Susi and Gloria R. Susi, Gloria F. Susi Revocable Living Trust. Okay, so I have a, a revised uh, application that just reflects that. If you want to keep that for the record, and then I also revised the authorization to have you represent the trust, and that's. So, Keith, when did you become the sole trustee? Uh, three, uh, two and a half years ago. So here's the trust document, just so we know. So well, this trust document you gave me, you, you supplied as Keith and Gloria, right? Right, and Gloria is deceased. Well, you so, didn't tell me that. So the, yeah. Well, that's what I was going to explain to you. So the terms of trust states that one, if we are deceased, then we can be sold. So, okay, cool. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, with regard to the comments that, uh, that John had, I don't know if you have those in front of you or not, or if you look at those. Um, I have a narrative here just that we go through and address those issues. So with regard to item one, I think we just talked about that. Uh, that was re regarding the uh, the official name of the trust and a Keith is the sole trustee. Um, item two was the title on the plan and uh, we've revised the plan to reflect uh, the Robert R. Susi and Gloria F. Susi Revocable Living Trust. Uh, the third item had to do with the two... Uh, can I explain? Yeah. So if you look at the plan, um, You'll notice that both the existing house and the existing shop <coughs> are entirely non-conforming. They're, they're entirely in the front setback. The um, lots along Portland Avenue have a 100-foot front setback. Uh, it's my opinion that these that this subdivision does not create uh, does not require a variance. These are non-conforming structures. The subdivision doesn't make them any more non-conforming. The, the newly created sub side lot line doesn't create a setback issue. It's simply that the houses are within the front setback. I'd ask uh, Kevin to ask Tom Clark for a letter saying that he's okay with this, uh, but, I don't, but I think I've Kevin several several times, times and never heard back. Not I can follow up. But I don't, uh, it's sort of critical that we make a decision right now. But, I mean, I guess maybe the board could, could weigh in on this, but I, I, again, the houses are there. I don't think the subdivision is doing, you know, if the, if the new if the new lot line was creating a setback issue, then I would think, obviously, they'd be a variance, but I don't see how the subdivision creates any more nonconformity than, than is already there. Um, but in order to accept this application as complete and move on, we sort of have to, we really need an answer. I will tell you, I ran it by your town attorney. John Radigan, and he, he he didn't think that there was he didn't think this was a, 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 a there wouldn't be a requirement for a variance in this case. Um, and I think you spoke to I spoke to the uh, FX Bruton's attorney in Dover, and he was of the same opinion that it would not affect the subdivision does not impact the nonconformity. If they're nonconforming now, it doesn't increase the nonconformity. But in order to accept them and ultimately act on this. So, you know, the board, you guys have to be on board with that. How far are they? They're right there. They're right on, well, they're, he doesn't get measurements. Right, they're, it's a one inch equals 40. I mean, they're probably 20, 22 20, feet, that's 25. From yeah. the, well, from over here's the, here's the lot line. That's the right of Oh, okay. Because the so right probably way, 20 so. feet there, maybe 30 there. Yeah, maybe. 30. It's yeah, significantly was, more from the, the paved section, but. Yeah, the right, right edge of the pavement section. Right here. Yeah. Okay. But again, they're there. Let me just take the opportunity to recognize Glenn Chase, who's an alternate to be a full member at this meeting since we're down one for purposes of discussion and voting later. I agree so, that it's not any more non-conforming. Is there any um, 
significance in creating an additional non-conforming lot as opposed to having one whole? Well, both the lots are both the lots are conforming. It's simply the structures on the lots right. that are non-conforming. So that's right. why I don't. I, everything else about these lots is it's conforming. Well, we could grant a variance. Well, you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And again, I don't. I don't think that it's. I don't believe it's required. Um, I did ask Kevin, like I said, to, to ask uh, to get in touch with Tom, and he, he did try on three occasions with no success. So uh, I don't. I, you guys, you got to, you're going to have to make a decision as to how to handle it. We could potentially stay the application until the next meeting. I'm looking at options. I want to, I want to go through options. We could call it incomplete. We could call it no worse as to, you know. You could, you could not accept the continue. application and put it off another month. Um, here, this is. You know, I've, I've had this opinion before, in, in not, a, not with regard to Tom, but with, with regard to the fire chief. I wrote my memo on November 1. It's now, what is it, uh, 12, 13. 13? I don't know when this it was submitted to the town, but I didn't get it right away. Um, and I'm not trying to throw anybody. I just feel as though, you know, to ask someone three times for an opinion and not get it, is it, is it fair to ask the applicant to come back? I agree. Talk? I'm just worried about the legal implications of skirting the zoning board if that's what is legally required. Which I don't necessarily think so, but, you know, what are the legal ramifications of proceeding? Well, I, I suppose a couple. One is the, the, uh, the selectman, I suppose, could appeal the planning board's decision that, 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 that they should have had a variance. Uh, or a uh, and a butter, and a butter. Could, could appeal and say they should they should have had a variance. Um, you know, I, I don't I, I don't know. I, I I guess I can't give you any other guidance other than I I can tell you I talked to John Radigan. I do have a great deal of respect for FX Bruton. I wasn't on the phone with Kevin and Dick and he, um, and I think uh, um, and and I, and I share the same thing. So there's three people. They were conforming when they were no. uh, they well, zoning. Was the the house is, I think it's just in 1890. It's pre oh. zoning. I think it predated zoning. Both buildings. Both yeah. Building yeah. Yeah. Both so yeah, so they predated zoning. Yeah. And, and so they're, think, le they're legally not conforming. I think the 100 foot setback was actually put in quite a bit after, you know, fairly recently, I think, in the last 10 it, It's <clears> not <throat> original to the zoning, right. which is exactly. 1971. So there's all that. It predates all that. I mean, it would seem to me if, if, if John has had a discussion with his town attorney and if you were asking the I, town attorney's I don't, opinion, I don't, you know. I don't have any qualms about it. Glenn and John, I'm wondering how you all feel. I'm not that calm. I mean, I don't know. I, 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 uh, I, I'd like to see it in, in writing from Mr. Radigan, Attorney Radigan. I, I, uh, the general principles are you don't. I don't like expanding a non-conforming property, but in a way, it, it is in the sense that you're taking one and creating two. I, I'm just not that. I'm up in the air about that. I I don't have an issue on the other hand that I see, you know, two pieces of property from one that existing buildings. Nothing is changing with the exception of the lot line that. Um, I, I don't see that it should uh, be the only thing if, if everything else works. I mean, if it, if it has to be signed off at a later date, I don't have any issue with that if we could approve it and then. But whatever your call is, I feel comfortable that this is not an issue. So, so to open the public hearing, we have to move this as complete, which means that we need to determine this is, right yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just, a, just, I just want to not correct Glenn, but um, follow up on what Glenn said. This is not an issue of, of uh, giving an approval subject to, you can't even accept it if it's not, if you don't think it says, if, if, if you don't think it meets the requirements set forth in the zoning ordinance. So, um, it would be a. I think you could probably uh, continue it, but you can't. You can't approve it subject to. Also, I I believe 
<coughs> this board is is not permitted to to not accept an application as complete based on another board. Um, so if if the zoning board if this needed zoning board approval, we can't not accept this application. I, I remember reading in the. So we can also, John, wouldn't you say, vote to find it complete and then defer it later to zoning if that's what's determined at that point? Uh, look, there's, there's situations that I've run into with real big projects, you know, huge commercial projects where you get five months into a review and all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, you know, we need us to the variance. That happens. It happens all the time. Um, it, not from, through anybody's fault. This is a clear case where it's right in front of your face. You know, um, uh, and I, I would say to you, if you think there's, if there's a problem, if you, if you all think that a variance is required, um, then I would not accept the application. I would continue it until uh, to a later date and um, uh, make a decision then. Again, I don't, I don't believe, I don't agree with that position. I don't think a variance is required. John, let me ask you: Is this a not? Is this does this property have a non-conforming structure on it? It has two. Uh, two. Okay. Each lot would have. Actually, it has three. Each so, lot. you know, the zoning ordinance uh, five point three says the following principles control structures that do not conform to the current ordinance. So, wouldn't that ordinance apply in this situation? And if not, why not? What does the ordinance say, John? That says the following principles control structures that do not conform to the current ordinance. And it says number one, the two-dimensional footprint of a structure and the setbacks established by the ordinances may be expanded. Yeah, that's 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 not that, okay. That without I mean, yeah. without further intrusion into the setback, yeah. if granted, a special exemption by the Rolling Rollinsford Zoning Board yeah. of adjustment. They're not, they're not asking for a, an expansion. It says why, under what conditions um, you can they have to be met in order for that to, yeah. to happen. Again, they're not asking for a, to expand either structure, either any of the three structures. There's a, there's a detached garage, a house, and a shop. There's no plan to expand any of them. And if there were, then at that point, there was setback. Sure. Then, yeah, I, it's my understanding that you want to sell one or the other or both. I'm doing it just so my niece can buy the house. Okay. So if 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 uh, Keith yeah. if Keith's niece buys the Keith's niece buys the house, decides she wants to expand it, she gets a you know one way trip, one way ticket to the zoning board. And she can't expand. Need, none of these can be expanded at all without a variance. So the operation of the shop won't change. You're not turning that into a nightclub. Right now it's a. <laughs> I think the way to look at this is is, the, is what is the issue of the nonconformity? What causes the nonconformity? And what causes the nonconformity is the houses and the structures being within the setback. So if it's on one lot or two lots, I don't think you I don't think the test is that you're increasing that nonconformity. That exists today and it will exist whether you have one lot or two lots. What you know, any change in the structure, obviously that, that's a, a different ballgame. But I, I think the test of not increasing the nonconformity with what we're asking for is the way to look at it. I, I agree with that. My only um, process question I suppose is John, is there something about creating is there something about a subdivision or creating an additional lot that would cause one to have to evaluate all such things about the lot so that you would create the special exemption or somehow, you know, send it to the zoning board for that reason. Since you're since you're evaluating the lots, is there both something about lots, that process? Everything about both of these lots meet the frontage requirements. They both meet the minimum lot uh, size requirements. Um, the houses happen to meet. They, they also meet the side setback. Um, Requirements. So I don't. There's the only nonconformity with both of these laws is what exists there today, and the fact is that, that all three structures are within the same.
within the front setback. So I, again, th this this subdivision is not creating, in my mind, any more non-conforming things to sit today. I, I, I can say one. I, this is what if, if the board is struggling with this, I, we could put it back on the applicant and say, here's what we can do. We can delay it a month, and uh, hopefully we'll have a response from Tom. Or we can proceed that they're understanding that if a butter appeals, that it thinks that we made a, an error uh, of zoning, then they're at risk of having their appeal of their uh, approval overturned. Those are two options. Thoughts? I don't know. It just. Um, it does say expansion. It doesn't be expanding. I'm a little bit concerned, but I guess I'm not extremely concerned. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned. All right. Somebody want to make a motion? Uh, I'll move to accept the application submitted as complete. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We're good. Hurdle one. Hurdle one. <laughs> So should I just continue with the uh, comments? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, so I think we covered the, uh, the non-conformity issue. Um, uh, there was a concern about uh, the driveways and, and that right now there are three drive cuts that exist on Route 4 and uh, they they are commonly, they're separated by several a couple of islands. Okay. It's actually one, yeah, there is a stuff. Yeah. So um, the the idea is to, to keep those in existence and for each of the lots to uh, to have access over both of those. So we've shown on the plan a potential access easement, and we have a note on the plan that says uh, an access easement will be recorded accordingly. And we can show prior to you signing the plan, we can get a copy or a draft of that easement for your review. Uh, the, the second, the next item we had to do with the, the well and the common use of the well. Uh, currently, both uh, structures use that, that one well that's on the house lot, and we'd like to continue that use. So uh, we're, we're also going to uh, provide you with the well use easement, and that's noted on the plan as well, and that'll be for your review before the final signing of it. Um, there was a uh, notation about the monuments being set or to be set. I have, we have not set all those monuments, so I changed the plan to say that they're all to be set. And then further down, there's going to be a cert monument certification that we will say that those are set uh, when, when we get those done. Kevin, um, I missed yeah. something, but we talked about it. Uh, what was that? We still, uh, I, I, I don't know how I missed this, the, uh, the utility easement. You've got a utility pole out front, right? That services both the house and the shop, I believe. Yeah, the services come off that. Yeah, where and so you must. So you also need a utility easement going from that pole to the house, correct? See what I'm saying? Look at all right here because it's on the it's it's, it's, it's on the right. shop side. I'm, I'm assuming it goes that way and then that way. Right. But, <coughs> I, but it's we were we were going to do like a, a blanket easement as far as that goes too. That's fine. That's fine. Rather than because yeah. of overhead. Services, yep. not underground. Yep. Maybe it doesn't, it may not hit the, you have to shoot it. Maybe it doesn't hit the corner of the lot. Yeah, I think it's pretty close. It looks awfully close to me, but I don't know where it hits the house. So then uh, there was a notation about um, setting a monument at the rear of the house lot back in this area. There's actually a 24 inch oak tree that's right on the corner, so we're not even going to set a, a marker, but we did note where the bedded. That tree is, is in that location. Uh, and then we had to do the signatures, my signature and the wetland scientist signature, which uh, we, will, we will complete. We also have been in contact with the assessor's office, the assessor, as with regards to the uh, tax map and lot numbers that we're proposing on here, and they, they were acceptable to the assessor. assessor. So I think that's everything that I have. I have to answer any questions that you might have. There's, sure, but the service. But the service. The, I would assume that the service probably comes off the pole and splits. Mm -hmm. What I don't know. It's, it's the overhead, right? 
Make a motion to accept based on. Wait, 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 hold. I forgot. There were two waiver requests. Uh, 
setting granite markers where they're required. The, the, the new lot line that we're creating as it is on the right-of-way line of Route 4 is within the pavement section of one of the driveways. So my suggestion or my recommendation or I guess we're requesting a waiver that we don't set a granite bound there and that we set a uh, either a magnetic nail or a railroad spike or something similar to that. Yeah, I don't I don't think that waiver is required. I mean there's no way you're gonna put a granite bound. Okay. I think and I, I agree that that's an that's an acceptable alternative. Okay. The his mapping is I mean that's I think that's a reasonable way for so. <clears throat> Nothing new is proposed. So before you take an action, you should, you should, the board should consider granting a waiver. Again, I don't believe that the, 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 the grant bound is equal to the, there's no way they can comply, so I don't think it's, I don't think you need to waive it. Um, and, they're, and they're providing a reasonable alternative. But you do need to act on the waiver of Section 102K, which is the high intensity soil survey. They already they have they have mapped the wellings. They proved out the four K areas for both septic systems, and they can put wells in the lot. So I don't I don't think that his map would do anything. Is there a reason not to include that in the full motion? I would. It should be granted. I think it should be granted separately. And, and, and the board may not agree with me on the second waiver for the for the granite bound, but I, I don't think you can waive something that's not even practical. So I, I would move that we um, issue a waiver for the high intensity <coughs> soil survey on this application because we can do them one at a time. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you have that, Sarah? In section ten two K. <coughs> um, is there is there an appetite for doing the other one just for the sake of being clean, or do we not feel that? Yeah, why not? So uh, I also move that uh, we issue a waiver, um, waiving the the need for a granite marker uh, in, in the middle of the campaign, which is section nine, section nine. ten. Yeah. I'll second. All those in favor? So, Glenn, would you, 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 were, you were ready for Yes, so I, I would like to make the motion to accept the application as complete, contingent on well, the... We, we have it complete. We have it complete. Uh, uh, on, um, You're making a motion to approve the plan. To approve the plan. With the following conditions. With the following conditions. Okay. And okay. those conditions are set out in uh, item number four of John's technical memorandum, number five, number eight, number nine, and number 11. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On the agenda, a subdivision um, named Oldenburg Lane off of Clement Road by Diversified Builders. I, um, if I could have that, I don't have a copy of that. Thank you. Put one this here. Um, Chris, is there a revision from your submitted plan? Is off from, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, is off from uh, Clement Road. Uh, it was the topic of conversation for a subdivision that was performed about a year ago now. Um, and uh, the road name at that time was established as Oldenburg Lane. And what uh, was approved then was an open space subdivision. 
which included a frontage lot on Clement Road um, that's been built out and sold. Um, and then it included a roadway that came down to a small cul-de-sac here, and then three duplexes that were positioned out the back, and then there's a single family home also positioned uh, off from Oldenburg Lane. Um, what we've, uh, we're looking to modify the project here this evening. The open space area that was proposed at that time is not to be revised at all. Uh, so all of this would still be uh, open space. All we're looking to do is revise everything that was within the development of the project to begin with. And what we're looking to do is uh, shorten the roadway a little bit, so bring the cul-de-sac back, um, which uh, sh obviously shortens the length of the roadway, reduces the impervious surface, reduces the amount of infrastructure that would have to be maintained in the future. Um, and instead of three duplexes, which would be six units, uh, we're proposing uh, five single-family um, house lots, or, or LCA, or the, what we're calling limited common areas. So, and there's a provision in the uh, subdivision regulations and open space ordinance that allows for multiple single families to be on a lot. And we're choosing to basically break those out into a condominium style uh, development. So uh, the conversion from the duplexes to single families, um, essentially what we're doing is creating areas where people own, they own the house and they own area around the house, very similar to a fee simple lot. Um, but uh, the area in total is actually owned in common. Um, and so it would be a homeowners association set up for uh, this area as well as the shared open space. Um, the single family house lot that was created off from Oldenburg Lane that would remain as a single family house lot um, and be a fee simple lot. And then the remainder of these uh, would just simply be uh, single family homes. So what we've done is uh, we modified the engineering documents to shorten the roadway. We reproduced a stormwater uh, drainage and maintenance uh, plan. Uh, that's gone to your engineer for a review, some of consultants. Today I received their review back, and I'll talk about that in just a, a couple seconds. John had written a technical memo. Um, we wanted to come to the board tonight, hopefully receive a, a, an acceptance as complete, and then uh, take any discussion points that you might have, and then come back in December. Um, where hopefully we've addressed uh, John's comments as well as civil consultants and then any of the comments that have come out of the board. So um, I did take the time to show uh, throughout the plan set where the single family homes would be, uh, where the effluent disposal areas would be, and where the uh, wells for each one of those lots uh, would be, as well as all the technical specifications for the road design itself. So um, that's a lot of information for um, a simple summation in that all we're looking to do is uh, shorten the road and then convert the project from six units down to five single family units. Uh, the last planning board uh, process that we went through, there was a lot of discussion about uh, buffering and tree planting along uh, and fencing along the uh, southerly boundary line. Uh, none, of, none of those uh, specifications have changed. Those are all still incorporated within the plan. Um, the applicant and uh, Oz have discussed some uh, revisions to that moving on down the line, but um, for tonight's meeting, as well as uh, finalization of the plans, um, we're still showing what, what we had originally said we were proposing to do at that time. So other than that, there are no uh, substantive changes to the, uh, to the plan. Did you want to speak to the comments and the technical reviews? Um, I can, if, you, if you'd like. Uh, John uh, brings up a couple of points which he and I have loosely discussed. Um, he notes that a much better suitable building area for this lot would really be out here. Um, <coughs> we've actually already produced a septic design and uh, the applicant already has plans to build on this lot here. Um, so we'd like to leave this area here and, and to my knowledge John felt that that was fine. Um, I, I also like the idea of leaving this as open space. It's more congruent with the rest of the open space and sort of keeps the development close to where the development is taking place. Um, it's been a little bit since I've read John's uh, document. He talks about uh, stamps and signatures being on the plans. He talks about a couple of uh, construction details that probably aren't warranted in this plan set. Um, most notably, he mentions in the plan set that we uh, were proposing some lane striping at the front of the project. 
Um, we call it the PM9 standard. It's a standard DOT striping method. Uh, it's probably not necessary for this project. It's a really low volume road. It's local. And I think John's point of view is that it's just more paint that the town is going to have to maintain in the future. So if it's not really necessary, and the board agrees that it's not necessary, we, we just remove it from the plan. So other than that, um, I think in the next uh, round of revisions, we can take care of the rest of John's comments. Um, the civil consultant comments, which we got today, um, as Jay points out in his cover, a lot of them are just small drafting things that he'd like modified to the plan set. Uh, the most notable thing that Jay points out is that the planning board granted us a waiver that allowed well radiuses to overlap and overlap lines. But what he points out is that on unit 5, or LCA area number 5, that well radius hangs into the road right of way, which is becoming more and more of an issue uh, with salt contamination, things like that, getting into people's wells. And so Jay points out that um, though we do it all the time, it's probably not the best location for the well. And so I've agreed to take that well and just move it down back and then modify the septic system for that lot out front. And then sort of the same comment for LCA area number one, uh, I would just take this well and I would move it over so that the uh, that this well doesn't quite overlap the next LC area quite like it does in the plan. So uh, that was really the biggest thing that came out of uh, Jay's uh, comment letter. He actually took the time to call me today so we could sort of talk through that issue. Um, so again, future, future revisions, which will take place in the next week or so, we would modify that in the plans and then resubmit them back for Jay and John's review and approval. I don't know if you want to do it now or after you uh, open the public hearing, but there's a few comments that I, just to make progress between now and December, I'd like to talk about with uh, the board and Chris. you want to do it now or after the public hearing? Or, or? Let's do it now. So the, the first question, or the first issue is my comment number two, uh, number three. If you look at, Chris, can you... The easiest plan, the simplest plan to see this on is sheet three of 19 if you have a plan set in front of you. Sure. But there's two easements that I'm, well, there's, a, there's a couple of easements, a uh, drainage easement. Um, I'm assuming you're going to see, you, you're going to want this to be a town road. Yeah. yeah. Um, these are relatively small lots. So if, you, if you're coming down Oldenburg Lane, you'll see easement area number one, which is a rectangular uh, area. See that? Here. Uh, I'll point it out. Uh, so here's one right here. Here's the next one. And really, that's the next one. And what I, I'm sort of torn with that third one, but I, I, so I'd like to see if we could just make those part of the right of way. Um, they're relatively small. I don't think they're, they're critical for the lot area, and that way the town will own them. There won't be any any question as to who owns that land. Um, the third one is relatively big, however, um, but the, the first two are pretty small. And I, I don't know, Chris, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, the first two I wouldn't have an issue with. The third one... Although it pushes back your setback. That's the, well. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where it, yeah, that's where it runs into you run into a problem. Um. So uh, functionally, this is just a side slope easement. Um, I, I, and I understand. I just want to make sure that it, when when and if this becomes a town road, if there's maintenance that needs to be done there, now all of a sudden someone's planting their lawn right to the side of the road, and, and something needs to happen, and it's a problem. Yes, the town would have a moving over, but you know it's never as easy as hey, this is part of the right of way. Um, is it critical to have that easement area, Chris? For those uh, one, two, and three, just just for purposes of <coughs> no, no. Is it is it critical? Does the town is is there going to be future maintenance required there? Just the side slope of the road. Nothing you can do to. Suck to uh, less uh, than that. Then I go to 
two to one, which the road agent probably isn't going to like. Yeah. Alright, did you change the radius of the cul de sac at all? Was the no. I was smart enough to do that. Um, so I, I, I guess I don't know what to tell you. Know, I don't know what to do about this, but I, I, um, this is not unusual. It's just that these, you know, these lots are relatively small. If these are two-acre lots, I do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> well, and I probably wouldn't even ask you if they are two-acre <laughs> lots, but um, because they're so small, I'm just concerned that people are going to use that as they are. And, and if there is future maintenance required by the town, it could it could be a problem. But um, Maybe we could just ask Chris to look at that and, and come back in December with some more thoughts. What's in the basement? Is it just it literally a graded size hole? Okay, that's it. But what happens in five years if there's a you know, 100 year storm and it falls off? And, 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 and that material ends up in these people's yards. Yep. The town's going to go in there and pull it back out, regrade it. <clears throat> that's when it becomes a little. And I don't, I'm not suggesting that's going to happen, but. Um, So that's that's the first issue, but I think we you know it'd be nice to get some uh, have some further discussion on. Um, the the only reason I'm not just outwardly saying we don't have an issue with that is I'd like I'd like to take a moment specifically with a couple of Jay's comments and make sure all the pieces of the puzzle fit still you know if if we come back and we're able to design a system uh, well that makes Jay happy and makes John happy then we'll make it part of the the road right away, that's not a problem. But I don't, I can't see the solution right now. Yeah. And so that's I don't right. want to just agree to it right that's now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. My question, my uh, comment number 11, if you uh, look at sheet, uh, sheet 4 of 19, yeah, the next sheet, it's kind of driveway locations. If you look at the driveways, um, there's, there's, well, I like it, and I, I'm not a huge fan of shared. What's that? What's the driveway? Oh, you mean cutouts? Yeah, the driveway cutouts. Cut yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of shared driveways, but I'm also, you know, the town's going to be plowing this thing. That is going to be nothing but a nightmare. Well, you've got four in a row. Right, like, four, that's like, exactly right. You know. And I think there's, you know, this is a good case where you could go to two, and they could, they can split almost immediately. But I think two curb cuts in that small area would make more sense. They could put them right in the lot lines. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because they're so close that it's just going to—it's it's literally going to be nonstop maintenance for the town during the winter time. That's fine. We don't have a problem. So just combine the two, the four and the two curb cuts, where are the lines for us. So lots two and three will have a shared driveway, and yep. lots uh, four and five. Right. Yep. Okay. Well, four and five, you're going to have to deal with that detention that with the uh, drainage. But I think you can figure it out. Uh, You'll figure it out. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to combine driveways from one and two? Yeah, I guess John. Number two and three. Number, there's no number 11 talks about combining three and, three and four, which I don't have a problem with. But I do have a problem modifying five. Well, could you move it over? Or five? would the slope allow for Just you to get uh, some separation with sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't mind combining one and two, and I don't mind combining three and four. But okay, let's do one and two I and think three that's, and four. And then you that's can move five. Perfect. That's right. So, so we're going to lose two drivers. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so now you're going to combine one, one and two, two and three and four, and five will be moved over five. And that's all I have. It's, it's really the, the warrants discussion. So, you know, those are calls I can't make. John, do you have any comments about the, um, the well radius and the right of way um, for the salt? They do it all. I mean, people do it all the time. They have wells in the in the in the roads uh, in, in the road right rights of way. Um, the reality is these wells are probably to be I don't know five six hundred seven hundred feet deep. You know, the casing is going to go into bedrock, so the likelihood of salt contamination is probably slim. But there's a viable option. And that is to put the well out back, and that's what I think they ought to do. If Chris says he can do it, then um, he's, he only has one radius, and it's only about five. That's the problem, right, Chris? Yeah. yeah. And I designed myself into a corner, and that's the only reason I put it there. Um, if he 
he thinks he can pull the, the radius out of the road, then I think we should try. That's fine. And that's all I think. One second. So, Mr. Berry, I think I'm the, the only member of the board that was here when you was before. I think we spent three hearings last time, about a year and a half ago, in a sidewalk. Why is your client coming to us this soon again? What, what's the reason for this change after all the time we spent uh, on the previous site plan and subdivision? Um, he's, I mean, he's primarily a single-family home builder, and so he would like to build single-family homes. That's that's the difference. So, and and it. In the middle of in the middle of our last permitting process, John and I actually sat down and looked at an iteration of this plan um, to see what other options uh, Claude might have on the on the project. Um, and at that time, we wanted to move ahead with the eight total units, and now uh, he'd like to drop a unit and do singles instead of the three duplexes. That's so, so the um, so before refresh my memory, how many duplexes were going to be in this development? Three. Three. And how many condominiums are going to be in this development? Five. Five. Um, so there's a, a net loss of one unit. One unit. And if he likes to be, build single-family homes, uh, why aren't they being sold as single-family homes versus condominiums? Um, that has to do with the require so your open space ordinance, John and I have actually talked about how this should be fixed and probably just hasn't. Your open space ordinance allows us to reduce frontages, lot areas, all sorts of things to, to generate open space and generate more densely um, developed areas. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't take away your lot width requirement. And so you're inherently flawing your ordinance because that lot width is still required. So by doing one of the provisions in the open space ordinance, which is to allow single-family homes to be on one lot and no feasible lot lines, um, we get around that lot width requirement. And so then we just generate limited common areas around the single-family lots or single-family houses. We can build the single-family homes on limited common areas. areas so. Okay. <clears throat> Is there any um, anticipated difference between the number of occupants in the condominiums versus what you had proposed before. There would be, we were proposing three bedroom units then, and these would be three and four bedroom houses now. So you have a loss of one unit. So you, assuming we build all four, four bedroom houses, you'll have 20 bedrooms, and then you have three I'm oh, sorry, uh, let's see, six, so 18, so the bedroom count would be within two bedrooms of one another. Because my, my memory, in your opening, you talked about the fact that the road's not very busy. One of the major items of contention at the last hearing was, in fact, that people presently who live on that road uh, felt that they, uh, the traffic um, was traveling too fast, and that they felt in danger going out at, at uh, walking along the road, in fact, the sight distance from um, the right-hand side of the, of the project um, here mm -hmm. as you look downward. And so I, I, I don't share your, I, I just mute your representation made at the, at the opening, but um, all right, I don't have any further, any further on that. How this would all be deeded, um, but that's, that's really a so issue. so. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, uh, I'm sure that, that the owner Claude would like to have these uh, single as fee simple lots. But as Chris said, the the problem with our open space ordinance is that it doesn't eliminate the lot width. So there's no way you could do smaller lots with, with a 200 foot width. So really, there's going to be no difference. I mean, these are going to, be, these are going to have survey bounds just like they are lots. It's just they're going to be, they're going to be counting in the lots versus simple lots. 
So there's going to be no practical difference. I don't think people buying the lots are going to know they're buying these, the, the limited common areas are going to I mean, they're going to be told that they're different. But for all intents and purposes, it's going to be exactly like a fee simple lot. Um, and I wish, I wish it could have been that way, but it, it, it just doesn't fit into our ordinance. What's your concern? Oh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's not actually a concern, it's just a curiosity. So each of the occupants would pay into uh, a, a fund for the common... It's going to be absolutely no different than it was before. Okay. I mean, there's going to be, I, I would assume, and again, I'm speaking for the, for the applicant, there's probably going to be a, a, an association fee initially set up to, main, to cover the maintenance uh, of the road mm -hmm. until, the town, until or unless the town accepts the road. And then there's going to be a small... Um, uh, there's going to be an association to oversee the management of the open space, but it's going to be probably insurance, an insurance policy. So it's going, to, it, it's going to be the same as it was before. Pretty negligible. Do we normally put conditions on an application to fund those? We, we, have, to, yeah, we have to provide the HOA documents, which okay. specifically discuss the funding. The rain gardens, that was, is an issue in the last round. Uh, are the rain gardens within the, are they in the common areas so the association's got to maintain those? Yeah, so one of the things I actually like about this design versus the prior design is because these limited common areas, limited common area means limited common. So you have a certain level of ownership of the land, but in general, it's common. So the rain gardens, to answer your question more specifically, are all within the limited common areas. So the association has the right to maintain them. Those, those areas specifically. The difference between this and the uh, duplex uh, lots that we were creating was each duplex lot had a rain garden. So it was a little disjointed in that you could have three different people maintaining three different rain gardens. In this instance, you would have one group maintaining all of them. What is the purpose of the rain garden? Uh, capture stormwater, uh, treat it, and reinfiltrate it into the ground. Did you consider or address um, Mr. S um, Stevens' recommendation about the swale on Clement Road? Uh, that's part of the project design. Is it in there? It is. Okay. So in my reply, I was just simply going to point out where it is, what she can be found on it. Okay. unfortunate this is going in. The question I have for you, Chris, is um, the last meeting that I attended when it was going to be duplexes, and we had a lot of um, abutters here, it was mentioned that they were going to be rentals. Are these going to be rentals, or are these going to be purchased homes? Purchased homes. Thank you. Mr. Lowry. Yes, um, Nelson Lowry, 327 Rollins Road. So as I understand it, this the circular array of housing is going to be a condo. How about the original um, single-family dwelling? Is that going to be part of it? Nope. So no, no. I mean, isn't there one? Excuse me. May I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that guy right there. Yeah. So it's part of the subdivision, but not part of the uh, condo association. So the association in these two single-family lots would have an interest in the open space, but. This single family home would not have an interest in these green gardens, for instance. Yeah, I have another question. Um, you talked about moving wells and so forth. How about uh, septic tanks and uh, beaching beds? So, uh, as part of Mr. Stevens' uh, letter to us, he asked us to move two wells, and that change will require that I modify uh, two of the leach fields on site. Okay, so I'm my concern that I expressed in a past meeting of um, 
the impact of effluent still stands, uh, I would like to be assured that, that any change is not going to impact on, on that original projection. No, nope, actually the uh, original projection from an effluent standpoint is decreased because we're dropping one unit. And you can assure us of that. Yeah, I can do a gallons per day takeoff based on the state loading standards. May I ask another question? Mm -hmm. Was Mark on Clement Road again? I just want to, well, I don't know anything about all this stuff, but um, the other concern I had, I think anyone with a well is, you know, we're there now and there's an aquifer and I don't know how exhausted it is. Is there any way to estimate, like, what those houses will be drawing and if it might affect the aquifer? Um, we, uh, we, we talked about this at length at the original approval process. Um, each one of these uh, houses will pull about 450 to 600 gallons per day out of the ground. Mm -hmm. So it's about 150 gallons a bedroom, um, which is a state average. It's actually a little, the state average is a little high. Leave that as a bit. Um, and uh, this has to go through a state permitting process through uh, Department of Environmental Services, mm -hmm. and they review, um, they review groundwater. For that, that reason. Thank you. I'll back first, Clement Road, 281. Um, I think you met Chris, you mentioned John. Um, John, you made a comment about maybe moving that single fee home back. It might be a better idea. Can you, is, there, is it okay for me to ask why you thought that? I know Chris and well, yes, um, because there's a this is a tremendous amount of uh, upland area here. This is a fair this is a fairly small lot in here, and they could do it with a driveway along uh, along here without impacting the wetland. So I just thought it would be nice when you drive in here to see more open space in this area okay. and have the house back here. I can't force them to do yeah, that. And, and this, this, yeah, that that's why. Um, but, but Chris is right, there are benefits of, of leaving this open to have a contiguous band of open space. My, my, my gut feeling is this is a fairly small building envelope. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and Chris, I, you know, my question is, in terms of, I guess, following on your question, um, maybe it's not relevant to the, you know, the approval process, but just so confusing, <laughs> we went through quite a lot of you know, rounds. Like I'm, like, I'm still very confused about why Claude didn't even because I think that would have been a lot less of a issue when we were going through the first time. Like I'm so confused about what changed um, that he wants to do single family homes right now because you know that was actually a big concern for all of us at first. Um, then we went through, which is now we're hearing this. Like it's just so confusing. What happened? I I, I couldn't tell you what happened. I. I, Does he like us to come here? I built I build by the hour, so no, probably not. I, I think, um, I, honestly, I think uh, he looked at he looked at building the duplexes, and again, the, for those of you that know him, he builds a quality single-family home. That's what he builds. It's what he's built in uh, Rollinsford and Dover and many, many of the other areas, and I think that's what he decided he ultimately wanted to build here. Celia Liverpool, 426 Washington Street. Um, can you remind me where the snow is going to go during the winter and where the snow removal piles will be? Sure. So uh, most of this, uh, actually all of this road is a fill section. So um, as the snow plow come, comes through, it actually wings it off uh, into the fill section. So we don't have cut sections in the roadway where uh, snow piles against the actual roadway itself. Um, and then a lot of this uh, would be placed in the center. Um, and then the snow that reaches off uh, is actually going to direct towards the rain gardens for treatment and reinfiltration in the ground. So the snow that gets put in the center, when it thaws or melts in the spring, is it going to flood the road and deteriorate the road surface? Nope. Uh, we've made accommodations for that. There's a, a outlet structure and a cross culvert that comes over the roadway um, so that that does not take place. You said you were going to shorten the road. Um, how does that affect emergency vehicles such as fire trucks and utility trucks getting in there for poles? It doesn't affect them at all. Um, 
the original circle, which is the same exact size, was just positioned out here. And all we've done is taken that circle and moved it back here. We've not shrunk the circle whatsoever. So the trucks, large trucks, delivery trucks and stuff, can still make that corner either direction. That's right. Okay. The, it was on the town ballot several years back, a shared driveway <coughs> ordinance. Does anybody on the board know if the shared driveway ordinance went through in the town? We approved two subdivisions under the ordinance. Yep. Yes, we've approved two. And so they're allowed in the community. <laughs> against, the planning board's, against the planning board's wishes at the time, yes. And um, is there going to be some kind of documentation either in the deeds of these homes or on the roads themselves about what the condo association is going to be required to do, uh, like maintaining the rain gardens and stuff like that? Yes, that's uh, part of the homeowner's documentation that's put together. When you legally create a condo, that has to be provided uh, at that time. I would assume John's a pretty clever guy. He's going to make that a condition of uh, an eventual approval uh, that we submit that and it likely be reviewed by John or somebody um, of their choosing. I would highly recommend that signage go up too, just because um, as Ownership changes. Sometimes things get lost in deeds and stuff like that. You know, it gets convoluted. People don't always read what they're saying. Um, <coughs> question. I'm Oz Akbis, Clinton Road again. To the board, and maybe Chris can too answer. So this plan, when what they're submitting, so it doesn't require any kind of variance or anything like so. It just it's as it is. We don't have to kind of you know give any variance to this project, right? So it's not just within the normal project limits. Correct. Okay. How about like when this came out, there was a kind of a worry around word condo. You know, I. Um, what's the difference? Is there any kind of cost benefit analysis of single fee? What did you say? Single lot um, fee versus simple, fee simple lot. Fee simple. Yeah. What, what is? Is there anything negative that we should know? or anything that doesn't even matter? I don't think it matters to you. Um, um, you said cost benefit. I, 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 I mean, I probably shouldn't say this for brother Chris, but he probably already knows this. I mean, I think a condominium lot is probably worth less, a little bit less than a fee simple lot. Mm -hmm. You know, most people that are buying a house lot want to say, those are my four corners and I own that in its entirety and I have a deed mm -hmm. for it. This is a little bit different, but people do it all the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it, if this was 20 years ago, I would say they're crazy, you know, they're, but no one's going to buy these. Mm -hmm. People have come to terms with, with the fact that it's a different, it's, 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 it, for all intents and purposes, it's going to be the same as your lot. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's going to be part of a condominium. Okay. So, is there a, is there a slight uh, a discount for these lots? I would say, I, mean, I think you would agree, probably maybe a slight Slightly, they're, they're, these are probably worth slightly less than a fee simple lot. Mm -hmm. How much? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Larry Mark, uh, uh, Clinton Road. That kind of makes me wonder because most people I know live in condos. The buildings are connected together and they all have to shell out when the roofs need to be fixed. Will that be the case with these? Nope. No. In this case, this is one of the reasons this form of development has actually become kind of popular is. Uh, you own your house, you own from the siding in, you own the whole structure. I, I actually own a condo and I happen to own the one next to me also in a neighboring community and in that instance we own from the studs in and when there's a roof problem there's an entire, you know, the entire project has a roof problem. So uh, with that regard, um, it is much closer if not 98% of the way towards single family home ownership, it's, it's almost identical. The difference is the, uh, the physical ownership of the land that the structure sits on. We call them limited common areas because it is, it is an area that is designated to you and you take care of it, you mow it, you deal with the snow in your own driveway, you deal with those types of issues, but the association has some responsibility in some areas, in this case the rain gardens, to maintain that area and make sure that it's presentable and that they have enforcement action against somebody in that if it's not maintained in the way that the HOA um, 
dictates. So that's the difference between a building and a lot. The second question, you may have already answered this, but when there were six duplexes, there were going to be six wells, and now we're talking five. Uh, there were six, uh, there was, okay, so there's six units, so three duplexes, um, and there were going to be three wells, but those, each one of those wells was going to be drawing the equivalent of two homes. Two of the right. homes. Right, right. Okay. So you still have a net reduction in water draw. I'm curious. I'd like to, Nelson, Laurie, Long Room. I'd like to follow up on a point that you made. Um, what is the enforcement for somebody who is not cooperating? So let's say that there is not neighborly harmony. Um, where is the enforcement to, to to force Family X to do their duty and maintain their their part of the of the condominium? Um, I'd have to read the specific language in. Most homeowner documents are almost identical nowadays, so I'd have to read what the language says. But there is enforcement action. There is an arbitrary process, or not arbitrary, there's an arbitration process, and then there's there's civil suit process. That so it sounds like it might be lengthy, though, if, if one of these properties is not sure. subdivisions, call it what you will. Sure. Um, the difference is if you don't like the way your neighbor is mowing his lawn, you really don't have any action against that. In this case, there is some action that could be taken. There have also been a few, there have been a few inferences to a question that I think I'll just address because it seems to be talked about. The, the open space subdivision, the cluster subdivision that allows that open space, if it were not for the condo association, it would be more complicated for the town to get tax revenue. That's now a inaccessible lot because of all these homes. So it has a reduced value on its own and it would not be allowed to be created otherwise on its own. So somebody has to own that and if it's left with the developer, then the developer has no incentive to pay those taxes and then it reverts to the town and it's off the tax rolls. And if it were to become a condominium association, then that value can be taxed through the association and all those homes can be responsible or leaned for that value. So there is that benefit from the town perspective. Is the Jenny Bannon 375 Raleigh Bill? Who sets up the Homeowner Association? Uh, we work with a local attorney. I mentioned earlier, FX Bouton uh, or Jim Schulte at the Dover. Um, and they, they put together the documents and then we submit them to the town for review. Okay, I just want to make sure they were in the town. Yeah. I would assume. Yeah. Now you moved, you moved the cul-de-sac. Um, who is who is the abutter that's right on that edge, right there? I can't read it from here. Yeah, right on the edge of the circle. You put, you pulled it down, so now it's right on. Uh, lot line. Uh, Martin. Uh, well, Martin Bowman. Yeah. Do they get, do they get, um, you know, visual bearing advice as to th that this is closer to the place, like right on the lot line? Do they have to? Well, the, the roadway <coughs> was positioned here before. So uh, the roadway came down, uh, was against their, their lot line, and the cold side came out here. So the difference is that this is this is the circle now. Uh, they were uh, notified as a butter. Is there? <coughs> And we're carrying that vegetation, proposed vegetation line down to that to that area also. Um, the other question I have is the, the rain gardens. You said that they are treated. How how, how do you how do you treat this water? Um, so the um, the a rain garden is built with different layers in it. It has a storage area, um, and then there's a 18 inches of biomedia. This is a specific. Uh, mixture of sand and, and loam and wood chips that we use. And then below that there's a stone layer and the wall, as the water moves through those layers it's filtered and cleaned. Okay. Uh, you can, uh, if you have some time and are interested, you can go on the UNH Stormwater Center 
and um, read all the documentation that they I've have. I've seen on. some. Um, and who maintains those? The, the homeowner has to. Maintain uh, the those? association would maintain those. Okay, so do those get do those get uh, replaced? You know, they have a five year because that one layer, especially with wood chips and. Sure. Sand. So uh, we're, we've been monitoring a number of these rain gardens now for about eight to ten years. Um, we haven't found any yet that actually need replacement. Um, what they really need is, um, on about an annual basis, they need to be, need to be weed out, you know, weeded out. Um, sometimes they need to be tilled up because uh, sometimes you do get some soil compaction. Um, but other than that, we're finding that they're very low maintenance, and that's why that's why we use them in, in my office. We use them a lot. Do you encourage growth on them? You know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, these are designed uh, with grass bottoms, but with a certain vegetation style to be placed uh, in and amongst them. So it promotes uh, nutrient uptake uh, by those plants, and it provo promotes uh, some actual habitat also. So small. We find there's a lot of small birds that utilize it for habitat. And my last question is: You said that these are three to four bedroom. Are they, are they all the same? design as far as how many bedrooms there are in each? Um, well, the four bedroom house is pretty, you know, I, I, I think the four bedroom house is pretty big, but. Sure. So, um, I hate it when I do this, but I happen to just take one of his common footprints and I just sort of plumped it around the subdivision. Okay. Um, there will be some variation in what gets built out there, you know, garage left, garage right, colonial, cape, you know, that type of thing. Two, three bit, two, three bath? Um, pretty much most of the houses now have two two baths. Yeah. Um, whether they're a three or four bedroom, they pretty much all have two baths. That doesn't impact the water usage. Yeah. Um, but we're most... But I, I, the reason I asked, sorry to interrupt you, but the reason I say that is because um, the more bedrooms and the more bathrooms, the more people. Sure. Um, uh, if you had... You know, two bedrooms and one bath. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have right. six people living in the house, yeah. which you could. Right. Um, but we also wouldn't have a marketable project with two bedrooms. Yeah. That's what we're finding. Elizabeth Markov, for the road again. Sorry. I'm thinking about the fact. So, with a school bus, you're going to have. I mean, she said there are going to be kids living in there eventually. Mm -hmm. um, would a school bus go in and turn around and come out of there? Because I'm thinking, having someone living with me that's been taking the school bus for the past six months, it's dark out there. And again, thinking of a, a large, I and mean, it's one thing for a car to get out of there, but for a big bus to get out of there, would the town be responsible for signage or something to tell people to slow down? I, I don't know how hidden that driveway is going to be coming out, but that's so, just a concern. So there's a... I guess a couple of responses. I'm not sure a school bus would go down this road. Okay, so kids might walk out. Most, yeah. most we're finding nowadays, school bus the school bus companies can't go down every cul-de-sac, mm -hmm. so they don't. Uh, they seem to stop at every driveway, but they can't go down cul-de-sac. Sorry for that. <laughs> Um, so there's, so I don't presume that the, the school bus would actually come down mm -hmm. here. And then secondly, a school bus driver is sitting much further above where the driver's eye and the normal car is. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, and we talked about this at length at the original uh, meeting, this sits pretty much at the apex of the hill, and we're, pre we're able to provide sight distance at 3.75 feet, which is approximately this tall, looking at 3.75 feet. So the school bus is far, far above mm -hmm. that. Lowry. Yes, Nelson Lowry, uh, Rollins Road. You said that the you expect these uh, these four bedroom houses to have two bathrooms. Now, is this two full bathrooms? Period, or is this two bathrooms and a lav? Um, that's my first question. My second question is: Would the a given owner of a, of a of a unit be able to add a bathroom to his unit? Or is, would that be prohibited by condominium rules? Chris, can I just... Sure. This, what they build on these is way beyond the planning board's purview. What we're creating is a lot. Someone could build a 12-bedroom house if they could get a septic system. Yeah. So it's not... I mean, That's the true. planning board cannot control what someone builds on a lot. And so I don't think it's fair to... I mean, it's, it's a fair question to ask Chris. And if he wants to limit these to three or four bedrooms, that's fine. But there's nothing to prevent, you know, once these lots are created, like any other lot in town,
someone could build a four or five. That's or not encouraged, not John. What's that? That's not encouraged. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can do the same thing. You can yeah. put an addition on your house with three more bedrooms. It, as long as you met the setbacks and you can provide a septic system to, to deal with your waste, then you can do that. There's not, we don't have an ordinance that says no house shall be more than three bedrooms. But I want to have nice neighbors, so I won't do that. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's nice, right, yeah. But in this instance, there, there must be condominium rules. <clears throat> so I'm just wondering if, if an additional bathroom could be, could be added, but, you know, potentially each one of these things. Sure. Yes. The rules wouldn't prohibit that. Right. Mr. Ross. Sorry, Foster, I'm sorry. I want to go back to your original meeting. Your line of sight was supposed to be, if I remember correctly, 300 feet either direction. I questioned that then, and I'm still questioning it now, because when you drive up Clement Road and you had an excavator sit, sitting near the end, you couldn't see it until you were almost there. Right. So, I don't believe that you've got a clear line of sight, 300 feet, especially coming out of that road looking right. And that should be because that's downhill. But it's, the board, I think, really needs to address this clearly before anything is approved. Because that will fall back on all of us, and by then, the developer will be gone. That just happened in the past. Here today and gone tomorrow. <clears throat> And the second thing is, are there going to be impact fees from this? No. No. Why? We don't have, we don't have impact fees. I believe so, they're actually in the in the regulations. We just do not impart them because the administration of them and the rules regarding what they can be used for is. Well, no, we, we we have we we allow impact fees. We just don't have an ordinance. That we don't we don't have an actual impact. Right. We, we have right. the right. To, we, we have, have the right. right. We just don't do it. We just don't do it. Meaning, we have to take the next step and say, "This is what the impact is. This is what the fee is." So, we we never collected an impact fee. And then you have to track that whole project and process and refund a lot of it. It's it's um, an administrative endeavor. Yes. <laughs> I'm yeah. in Rollins Road. I think the re the only reason I brought up the bedroom space is, is because um, I'm thinking about. The number of people that are going to be living in that, not as far as that type of, but the concentration is going to be for over 30 people that are going to be in that area. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now, nowadays, it's two cars per, mm -hmm. per, or more. Or more. Um, and I just think that, that that needs to be taken into consideration. That's a pretty high uh, concentration of traffic. If I could say something. So, we have an approved project now. In fact, the applicant is actively building it up. So, we're not asking for any changes to this section of the road. We're not asking for any changes at the entrance. Your review engineers review the site distance. Agrees. It's one less dwelling. Yes. And, it's one le and it's one less dwelling. So, really, we have less traffic than we were proposing originally. So but in the duplexes, did you have four bedrooms per duplex? Uh, I'd have to go back and look, but whether or not that's, we had, that's my point. I don't think you would have whether we had three eight or bedrooms in one in one building. Sure. So whether we had three or four bedrooms, traffic count isn't necessarily directly attributed to bedrooms. It's, uh, it's directly attributed to the type of housing stock. So we use national standards to determine how much traffic comes and goes from a project based on the housing style, <coughs> based on unit count. So we're down in unit count. The housing style is a little different. And we're not changing any aspect of this design that would affect site distance or traffic onto Clement Road. John, do you recall um, from either of the Johns um, the traffic conversation um, the first time around? And there, was yeah, there, was a, there was a lot of it. I mean, the, the issue is I don't think whether there's 70 trips a day out of here or 20, I, I don't think it matters. I think the, the discussion was. I think the the bulk of the discussion was surrounding the site distance, mm -hmm. and um, you know uh, if there's if there's six six homes here, you're probably talking about sixty trips a day. Is that fair? Something like that. So I, again, I don't, whether it's sixty or eighty, I don't think that's I don't think that's the issue. I think it's whether or not you know people feel comfortable with an entrance. We discussed it at length. We had sidewalks. Um, we had two engineers review that site distance. 
and they both concur that, that there's adequate sight distance. Uh, it doesn't seem to jive with what um, a couple of uh, butters have said, and I think John was, you, you, you were opposed, you didn't, you didn't agree either, as I recall. Um, so that's, that's sort of, I think, what the history of this thing was. was but at this point, it's all a moot point, because they have an approved plan for a road at that location. So really, the question is just to modify the lot shapes and dwelling units or not. Ross. Nothing. Just you know, I'm just listening. Oh, okay. Mr. Yeah. Ross had his behind no. you. Had his, oh. He may have an approved plan, but he doesn't have building permits yet. So you could actually hold the building permits out until he can prove to everybody that he has a clear line of sight for safety. I, I think that ship has sailed because he has an approved plan. So if we were to do that, would be sued. Because, because the, the, the initial conversation for this subdivision, when it happened and it was approved, all those conversations happened, and they were approved for the road at its location. So you, you, we would have no standing for holding up building permits. So what ha let's flip the coin and just say it does become a problem. Then who's going to hold it? The town Absolutely. or the developer? The town, because we approved the plan when we approved the plan. Then all right, then let's hold the plan up and say we've made a mistake. It has but to if, be if we were to do that now, our only recourse is to not approve this, and he has the original subdivision, which still has that road at that location. Then we don't have to accept the road. I mean, that is us. Well, uh, yeah, we, 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 we do. Oh, no, no, I know no, what you're saying. No, no, no. Like, when it goes to the road, town meeting, town meeting yes. right, we can say no, and then it will fall back upon the developer I, to constantly maintain the road. I disagree, because, again, in approving that plan with the intent that it become a town road, there is the intention there. I, I think, again, you're, you're opening us up for, for lawsuit. Well, I disagree. I think because if, if, they, if we feel there's a safety issue... We, as, as the residents of this community, I think need to be fully addressed. And I would think the developer and his engineering firm would want to make sure we were 110% satisfied. I completely agree with you, except to say that that was a year and a half ago, or two years ago. And at this point, the road is, is there, and they're approved for that there. So the question in the public hearing tonight is about the modification to the plan to allow single family homes and fewer overall units. If there are any more questions or comments about the revision of the existing plan. Just one request, Chris, do you mind sending um, me, you have my email still, like the plan, so I can share it with the, some of the neighbors who actually were in here, so sure. we're going to have actually a you know, meeting, mm -hmm. that'll be great. Yeah, I'm willing to donate this set right here and now. There you go. Uh, that brings me like really bad memories, John. I you don't want one. paperwork like that. Oh, <laughs> I'm traumatized by those three meetings back to back. Uh, My kids still talk about it. Uh, <laughs> I'll drop them off later, though. <laughs> now, there is another development in town that's similar. I think it has the same number of houses in a cul de sac settlement circle. And from my recollection, that is not a town maintained road. That's a homeowners. A town, but I believe they have it. They may have a homeowners association, but the town does plow it. Mm. So, but the homeowner. So that would be similar to this, where there's a homeowners association that helps maintain that area. I don't know. I, I wasn't around on the planning board. I don't know if Johnny could speak to that. I wasn't here. To that. So what happens is, in most new subdivisions, is there's an association set up to do a number of things. One is maybe deal with common areas. In this case, there's no lawn mowing or anything. It would just be an insurance policy over the over the uh, common areas. They might they might maintain the rain gardens, and then they're going to maintain the road. It wouldn't be the developer. It would be the home the the homeowners that share in the, in the maintenance of this road until it's, uh, and if it's accepted by the town. Ultimately, if the town doesn't accept it, they're going to they're gonna maintain ownership of it for, you know, forever. Uh, and then once the town would accept it, then that, then that portion of their responsibility would be uh, relinquished. And that's how it typically I changed my mind, and I'll take them if you donate it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
He's donating it. Chris, it will be easier to, than to printing it. I'm going to get a very good copy. Okay, are there any other comments, questions of the public? We'll close the public hearing. Okay, yes, we're going to have to suspend <laughs> Is the lighting or signage painting can get all your plan signage? Or lighting? No lighting. No lighting. No lighting. No lighting. Any difference in vegetation? No, the original plan. <laughs> I guess I could. I, I, I do think, Chris, I, I think it's a little bit, uh, the other comment, it's more a comment, is I think in terms of disputes between the neighbors, you are creating a potential for more complexity. And, and this is why I say that. So you, you've got these homes, right, that, can you bring up the ones that show the common areas the best? So you have these. So the common areas are these big V's, right? No. No? Where are the common areas? Oh, wow. Well, that's common. Okay, what else is common? That's it. These well, the road will be common, road will be common. until it's accepted by the, by the town. And those are limited common, so those would be basically like your, your house lots. So the only common areas are here and the big space out back. Correct. Sure. Okay. It just, I, I guess I was getting the impression for some reason that, so can you, for my... Those are what, setbacks. These are setbacks. Okay. Those are structural setbacks. All right, okay. From the All right. Okay. Or from the condom. All right. The only complexity I see is that if you had a, you know, if you have one neighbor next to another neighbor, mm -hmm. that neighbor one can take neighbor two to court. If you have a complaint by one of the, the condom owners about a common area, you have to get the condo association to enforce the complaint, not the, the uh, in other words, property owner one can't sue property owner three or four directly. It's because you've got to go through the condo association to do that. I, I believe it does add a, a layer of complexity, maybe not a huge layer, but I think you, you take away that remedy in doing that. That's the end of my comment. Can I bring up one more thing? Mm -hmm. Have we had a change in the administration of the fire department? Not recently. No. I just want to know if anybody wanted to revisit the, 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 the P cul de sac or the, or the T cul de sac, but I guess not. I, I'm not redrawing this again. But I, I, I'm sure there's not a change of feeling about that. <laughs> it's too bad. I mean, it's, it's funny that many towns do need, you know, have these uh, use T cul de sacs with great success, but. Uh, it'd be a heck of a lot less of, you know, pavement out there. Yeah. But it's the way it is. So. I, yeah. It's like they don't make reverse and fire engines anymore or something. Yeah, if it was a two-mile long road, I understand it. But, you mm -hmm. know, to back down that road, right. you know, in, 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 that, in, in a situation where there's a fire, then whatever. And, you know, it's a fight we're always going to have. Expectation is that I take care of the technical, outstanding technical items, bring back a revised set of plans. I didn't hear any items that came from the board tonight that uh, require plan revision other than uh, the easement areas and the driveways, which we'll address as part of John's comments. But yeah, if we could get a, a letter from Jay, um, this is fairly brief, but it'd be nice to get either no comments or you know maybe a couple. I mean, I don't think the board wants to you know, make a condition. Uh, or a grant a conditional approval if he's got 25 comments, but if he has you know, either none or two or three, that would be pretty good. Mm -hmm. so, and I know he's busy, so the sooner you can jump on him, the better. 
Thank you for your example. All right. Thank you. Section 8, the special provision. Um, that has to do with the special exemption in C1. I think that's what right. we so have to revise. Okay. Was that, what was that, that citation, said, sir? It's 8.1.2.10. Which is on special provisions. approximately page 48, depending on which version you have. <laughs> um, and so those are three. And then the fourth, um, we had talked about growth ordinance. After it all, I, I was in court late today and I ran here. I got here a little late and I apologize and I forgot my pack. I didn't bring it on that. that. That's really okay. So I sent you all um, a few emails right before this meeting. One, um, one of which is um, language about accessory dwelling units so that we can revise that appropriately. Um, and one about um, Growth ordinance or, you know, so, so I, I'm not remembering what our fourth um, revision was because we had talked about changing zoning somewhere and we had talked about um, growth ordinance. And somehow I, so um, I remember we had discussed Plan New Hampshire and a potential charrette. I said that was one of the emails, information about that, which is a good amount of administrative legwork if we were to undertake that for a huge value, tens of thousands of dollars worth of um, you know, advice about what we can do about things. So it's worthwhile, but it, it's a it's a heavy lift for for time. Um, so growth ordinance. I I, I'm, I somehow I think we decided to table that one and not address. There was something that we had discussed. Can you pull up the minutes? Um, so we discussed signing of building permits, possible growth management. Yeah. Ordinance, creation of commercial zones, yeah. accessory dwellings, the special provision to be stricken, 
uh, relevance of shared driveway ordinance? Yeah, are you <laughs> shared post investing timelines? So shared driveway investing, I'm sure we decided to hold off, hold off on. Yep. So, so the fourth, I'm not sure if we decided that we were addressing growth ordinance or commercial zoning. But I don't think we have enough information uh, yeah, to I mean, change the zoning this year. To go back a couple of years, um, Mike, had, remember Mike had started, he, when he, Mike first became a selectman, he had set up a economic development committee that never got off the ground. Yes. And the one thing that they had asked the planning board for input, and the, I think the only thing that we could sort of get behind, and I, I think we talked about this last time, was Oak Street. But, you know, it, there's nothing's going to happen this year, and maybe nothing's ever going to happen. I, well, um, it's, it's too late now to deal with it. And uh, yeah, I think, I think we have to be specific for March, and I think there's not enough time not to get enough. specific about yeah. what But I think it's, it's, you know, I think if, if there's going to be any commercial rezoning in this town, you know, the planning board would have to, I almost think that would come after like a plan to answer sure. Yes. Because, you know, maybe someone says, hey, let's let's gobble up a little bit of room for it. I don't know. I, I doubt it. But maybe. But, you know, where else do you have to go other than Oak Street and Route 4? Um, so. I, that, that's my recollection, which leads me to believe that I think we were thinking about looking at growth ordinance. That's what I thought we were looking at. Because conceptually, that's a lot to talk about, but in terms of language and specificity, it's pretty easy to implement as a, as a proposal, um, if that's a goal for this board. So I, I recall part of the conversation, and I, I think John, you you were discouraging us from limiting, like yeah. uh, outright limiting, right? Um, and I don't remember why exactly. Well, I, the reason I hate them is that first of all, I don't. I, when, when I just went through this in a town in, in Elliott, Maine, for years and years and years, they were they were doling out I think twenty one or twenty two billion permits annually. Um, and what would happen is that's how they, they, they thought over a 10 year period they didn't want to issue more than around 220 permits or whatever it was. Well, the problem is, is that in a recession they didn't issue more than a handful, two or three. So when the economy was going well and there was a demand for 30, they couldn't hand out 30. There was no rollover provision and it was a, whole, it was a nightmare to administer and they were basically controlling, regulating the housing market, you know, artificially. So. My, my thought is, is and I thought, and I felt this way for many, many years. If you want to, the, the best way to control growth is to have a good zone ordinance. So what, whatever you get for a subdivision, you're happy with. Fine, <coughs> you mean, um, you're not going to be happy with everything. Uh, the second thing is, if you think if you think that um, there's a, a cost of development that we're not capturing, maybe an impact fee would be appropriate. Um, and if an impact fee doesn't work, then I think the third, the last, um, the last thing that you could consider doing would be a growth management ordinance. I just don't like them because I think that you, you're, mani you're manipulating the, the housing market artificially. Um, well, isn't that really about how the regulation is, is written? So, you know, my, my reason for bringing it up is because we have a half dozen or, or dozen significant sized properties sure. yep. and you could get a large subdivision that would require a lot of um, you know it's like a double digit percentage growth mm -hmm. in our in our housing stock um, and implementing um, installing infrastructure and um, school capacity within a couple of years within a one or two years for, for the implementation of all those building permits um, could be catastrophic for us. Um, so, you know, I understand that for emergency purposes, I think we can freeze it for like a year yep. just to, yep. free, you know, figure out how we're going to cope. Yep. Um, but I'm not sure that that's a better answer than saying something like a limit of, of 10 per developer within the same zone or, or something like that per year. Um, not necessarily an overall cap or a, you know, a percentage of current housing stock per developer. So, so it's not even about the overall growth necessarily, but, you know, if you target it about a, a specific developer, and I'm not sure if that reaches the end goal in that they can subdivide their huge subdivision, but um, at least 
you're not getting this one subdivision in this one area, 200 homes in a year or, or something like that. I think we have to seriously look at either impact fee or, or, or growth management ordinance. Um, um, I think we're, we're one of the, and Bobby John, I think the LA's a beautiful town, so whatever LA's done, they've done very well. <laughs> I like the emulate. Well, well York, York, a, York is a good example. York had a growth management ordinance for years. They finally got rid of it and they found it's been gone now six years, no change. So it, what, it, what it does is, you know, they issue 90 permits when the economy is good, they issue 30 when it's bad. So and instead of controlling it, it's 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 been far better without it. But, it, but, but I, and, and I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I think we need to look at both because I think, I mean, our taxes went up, I think a good chunk, a lot of people are concerned about the increase in taxes. Um, you know, you get a large development, it's going to put a big strain on, you know, additional police officer, more school personnel, um, and I, I think it's reasonable to consider how that burden is going to be uh, allocated, and so um, and as well as just um, you know, growth is great. Unregulated growth, I think, could be bad. I don't, I don't. No offense, I don't want to turn out to be some areas. I think in the in the area that have grown without enough consideration of that. So uh, all I'm asking is I think we, should, we need to look at it, whether that be ultimately adopted or not. Maybe we don't, but I think we need to look at both those uh, those issues. Yeah, I don't think we can sit back and ignore and pretend that there's, you know, this, like you said, a dozen or so areas where there is the potential for these large subdivisions. Um, I think we at least need to be prepared, and I don't, I don't know what that looks like. So I gave you a sample one via yeah. email today that you can look at. Then. Well, and like it, the, I mean, the, just the administration of the impact fees, where it goes and happened to do all that, that's a lot. Now, your idea is a different route because the impact fees require no, that I, we I, I justify. There's a trade-off between the administration versus the increased cost to the taxpayers. And again, I'm not saying that one is that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a firm advocate for impact fees. I just think we've got to consider both options. So someone walked through the door. Of the we, you know, you did spend some time, you know, you spent some money having Bruce Mayberry do an impact, who's, who's the guy in the impact fee business, writing or, or looking at Rollins for probably seven, eight years ago. You might, I think it might be helpful to invite him back, maybe pay him a thousand bucks and have him at least go through the numbers again and see see if anything's changed. Were you going to reach out to him? I thought we had an actual, no. some, someone was going to reach out to him. I can reach out to him. Um, and do you have the original report that he created? Yeah, I think that's what we I don't. were looking for. Right, and, and maybe he does? I don't know. Because I, I haven't seen that, but I think that would be a good starting point to look at that, read through it, and then see. Okay, I will get that. You know, for yeah, ourselves, if we think it applies or, or if it needs revision. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure he'd tell you it needs revision, but yeah, you know, yeah. just generating the numbers, I, I, I don't think there's been a whole lot of change between now and six years ago. but. You know, it's, it's interesting that someone in the crowd tonight said, um, and there was a guy in the ZBA, wasn't it? Exactly, yeah, Mr. Falls. Do you, do you collect impact fees? Well, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you go to Dover to build a single family house, the impact fees are in the $20,000 range. Yeah. And I remember when we were talking to Bruce Mayberry, someone said, well, what happens if I want to give a lot to my son that is an exemption? And I like, no, a house is a house. So that's the, that's the bitter reality, is that if you, you know, all of a sudden, you know, a four hundred thousand dollar house is, or a three hundred fifty thousand dollar house is, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars more, depending on the impact fee, and everybody pays it. So it's whether but or not. But the accounting on that. Well, you, and, is, that, and that's the biggest problem. You know, yeah. when you guys issue six building permits a year, there's you're never going to spend this money. It's it's what you're waiting for is when someone comes in and wants thirty permits, but you can't do that. You know, you got to start collecting on day one, and, and you're right. You got to set up an escrow account for every single every single impact fee. And then you got to monitor whether or not any money was spent towards that end, and if it wasn't, you got to give it back with interest. So, so if someone walked through the door and asked for, you know, a 30, 30 unit subdivision. We have the ability to. Assess that fee? No, or you don't. Not you? No, not right now. You don't. No, you don't have an ordinance. And the conversation started when we were doing the Tri City, yeah. out behind Market Basket, and when he wanted to put in three hundred units. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we, don't, we want to get ahead of the curve, 
that next Tri City. Yeah, and, and what does that mean? What does that look like? Is it impact fees or is it growth ordinance? Yeah. Management ordinance or what or is it something else? Yeah. I think I mean, it's a good, good question. You know, like it's now's the time to do it. I would just like to see this group continue to look at our um, our regulations to see how we can every year, but even in between, you know, zoning it has to go before town meeting. So that's, you know, this is the time of year to do that. But So let's focus on what we can address that way. But I think we ought to continue to be um, reminded through the applications before us, but also through what we see in our town and what's going on, um, how we might revise our regulations throughout the year to be um, aligned with the master plan, which is due for revision. And maybe talk about that too. Not right now. I mean, we, you know, briefly now, if you want. But I, you know, we ought to plan. No, for what I was going to say was, you know, the other thing that came to mind tonight when he was, you know, the reason that Chris is pitching this condominium subdivision is because obviously he can't, he can't make those lots conform to the zoning ordinance. It'd be interesting to hear. I, 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 I might wrote the open space ordinance, but I think he did. He probably stole it from somewhere else. I hear everybody else does, but. I, w I don't know why that lot width was saved, and I, I, it'd be nice to hear. I, I'd like to hear. I wonder if Mike, Mike would remember why why they didn't get rid of that because they reduced everything else but the lot width. It could have been an oversight. I'm sure he'll come up with something. <laughs> no, because it, that's something that, you know. If, if we're going to reduce lot sizes, maybe we say in an open space subdivision the the lot width is reduced to 100 feet, and then all of a sudden you, you know you have a viable open space sub, sub you know ordinance. Um, but there may have been. I don't remember why that. What's it, why that's in there? But it's weird. He's in a meeting tonight. Right? But no, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm not suggesting he doesn't know. But it, it, he may not remember, or it may. It, like I said, it may have just been an oversight. Um, but. Um, but we ought to look at. That. We ought to look at it. You know, and I'm not saying you reduce it 50 percent, but maybe you reduce it, you know, to 120 feet width, and then you can have a, a, a you know, a real lot. Or a percentage of whatever is required. Yeah. For the sure. Sure. Percent. Sure. Yeah. But I think the list, of, you know, right now is and it's probably enough to handle for this year. For this year. Yes. So, especially if that's going to be, there might be a pretty long ballot. There will be a yeah. long ballot, but we're in the age of there will be a long ballot every year now. Mm -hmm. So, um, let us not be dissuaded. Just <laughs> make the four pages. Does that cost a lot more money? Yes, we have to keep the three pages. The three, the four. We're only budgeting for three. The, the, the fourth is the budget. Well, right, because we've got one question that brings us to the to the next line. So, so what do um, we want to do this? I want to go grab the calendar because the calendar I have a calendar that says the, the first. The, you know, it has to happen within a range. Why are your taxes going up so much? The taxes? Well, we're going to the assessment, right? We the assessment the whole. Yeah, I mean the um, they they bond up the value. Okay, so the first question is, would we anticipate a second hearing on any of these conversations? I would, I would say yes. I would okay. say probably should. So then, um, probably not. so Thursday, January 3rd, um, is the last day to publish, to post and publish the notice for a first hearing. Are you in the SB2? Yes. Okay. Um, So there are petitions, last day for voters. Last day to accept petitions. So that's really interesting. It goes all the way back to December, but it does not address what is the first day to post and publish notices for the first hearing on January 14th for proposed adoption or amending the zoning ordinance. Um, so January 14th looks like it's a Monday. Last day to hold a first public hearing. So we have to have our first public hearing out of January. Um, yeah, that's what it looks like, is that that's the... Um, so Tuesday, January 8th, I would suggest is our... Well, unless you think we're going to... I would say we're probably not meeting on the 1st. So um, January 8th looks like when we would have our 
January meeting, and that's the last day for voters to petition. And looking at these zoning amendments, the only thing, if we're talking about ADU compliance, I think we're compliant, but I'm not positive. I'll go through that. Um, it's it's square footage. Square footage, I think, is where we're not. Okay. My point is, if we're not compliant, it's a very minor issue. Yes. The, and then the other two are really, so we probably won't have a second public hearing. I don't think anybody's going to show up to these, so it's probably going to be one and done. So I, you know, but I, so I wouldn't worry about the second one. Um, it's not like we're proposing anything crazy. I mean, the the board of, the board of selectmen or the designee is just going to be a change, you know, right. a, a sort of a cleansing of the ordinance. So we have pretty much any time in January we can do this. Um, so why don't we come back uh, in, into the December meeting? I'll have something on the ADUs. The spec, I'll, I'll write them up. With the exception of the board of selectmen, I'm not going to do that uh, for you to respond. You and I can work on that, I think. Well, I, I don't think you need to. I think all you need to do is the, the, the ballot question is going to say you're going to yeah. change the word. I think in the minute it kind of has the wording. That Just it needs to, to change. Change people. the word board of selectmen to board of selectmen or the designee. Yeah. Throughout the word. select board. Or yes, we, we, yes, we, yes. You're They're not a board of selectmen, they're a select a board. Select. <laughs> Why are you a select board? Um, it, it happened um, a few years ago with um, so someone took issue with um, a perceived gender um, oh, cool. designation in the word select thing. Yeah. So the select board seemed more gender neutral. It's just the select board number. So we can we can wait on the whole thing then and talk about setting public hearings December fourth since we don't have to. If you could make a note to add that to the agenda of December fourth um, to select a public hearing date in January for. Um, I just added it. Probably do it January. It'll be a regular meeting in January. Yeah, yeah regular meeting in January, which looks like it's going to be the eighth. Yeah. All right. And I haven't heard about anything else coming in, so I don't. We'll have to change. We'll have to discuss the date change. That's true. December, I'll remember that. Okay. Have you heard of anything else coming in? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. You? Um, nothing to the point that it's gonna get here imminently. No. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> Calvin, I didn't get the email today. I didn't get any email from you. I don't know if you have that. Well, the last week was dropped off like six like thirty. Five, six thirty-five. Oh, no, I'm not seeing them on my phone now. All okay. right, so I'm going to check to make sure. Can you give me your email address? And I'm going to make sure. You, do you get when when somebody emails the group? Are you getting group emails? Yes. Yeah, I, I get I get the minutes. And well, stuff. that's because I don't use the alias. I have, my own, I have my own. <coughs> set up. Okay. What the is your alias? It's Glenn G L A N N Duck Chase. Okay. At Comcast on that. So I will forward to you what I sent this afternoon, okay. and then I will check to make sure you're in the group email okay. list. Cool. Thank you for letting me know. By the way, uh, I don't want to add, what happened to the um, gentleman that was interested in being on the board? Oh, yeah. He was invited to this meeting. Oh, maybe he was here. He was in the Do you know if he was here? <laughs> you're right. No, I don't no, think no. so. I, think I don't think so, because yeah. I recognized everybody who was here, Everyone I think. Is cool. I think. So... Oh, yes. Unfortunate, but thank you for following up on that. Question number one? Yeah, any, um, any other items? No. Okay. I'll move to adjourn. I'll second.